Hey, uh, Dak, you ever heard of Joe Boo? James. I know who it is, man. You know who it is. I've been hung out with Oh, I'm doing great, man. Congratulations on the baby, man. It's a beautiful thing. I have a baby blanket coming, but it's going to Frisco. Jack, there's your buddy. Hey. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work hope everybody's having a great day i am as excited as can be about being here in oxnard even with the issues that we have of course <laughs> with the joneses and dealing with uh, contracts and bringing in players and so on um today is a huge day and i am so glad to be here for this um when i ended up um looking and doing this trip you know i the last time i was here I got here the first week of padded practices, which was a good week, although we only had a few practices. But I looked at it on the calendar and I said, we've got the scrimmage on Sunday. Um, we've got, of course, four practices, including a joint practice with the Rams. Now, joint <clears throat> practices, um, the Rams love them. The Rams had a joint practice already with the Chargers, and I believe they have two more uh, with their teams that they're facing in preseason as well. They're not having two days of practice together, they're only having one. They're basically bringing the bus up, buses up from LA uh, to here to practice today. The practice will be um, two, two o'clock this afternoon. Um, so later than our usual one. So on the East Coast, uh, that's seven o'clock. But uh, we will be there. I'm going to probably get over there a couple hours early because I figure fans will definitely be here for this one. And you don't want to find out you're too late to get there. And they end up saying we're beyond capacity. I pray that we have a lot of people there because I'm sick and tired of hearing Eagle fans <clears throat> talking about how many fans that they've got at their practice and everything over there. So that's, you know, what my, my hopes are. Um, we, uh, here's where I'm literally still baffled and, and we've got plenty of time before practice. I'm just gonna kinda get in here this morning, my thoughts about C.D. Lamb. Um, my thoughts here on C.D. Lamb is, are the Joneses contemplating not signing C.D. Lamb and letting him go in the future. And the reason I say this is, is because basically in the same way they brought in Trey Lance to go ahead and say, is this a viable option? Because you have to understand how football works. They love you as long as you are cost effective and playing at, a, at an elite level and doing what they need. When those things slip or there's somebody else out there that can do your job for less, we appreciate you. There's no loyalty. You saw what happened. You know, we, we gave Zeke Elliott the richest contract in running back history. And when he stopped performing, psh, you're gone. Came back to him because there wasn't another, you know, option. You know, so this is an affordable option now, although we are paying six million in dead money this year, along with this contract this year. So in the end, the Cowboys still kind of lost money in that situation. However, you remember before that contract, they were contemplating whether or not Tony Pollard was going to be the guy. You'll remember famously uh, Jerry Jones saying, Zeke who? Zeke who? And when we get to wide receiver, I don't know that the Cowboys have really gotten value out of any wide receiver since Michael Irvin. It doesn't matter. Um, you can look and say Dex Bryant was a great pick. But after they signed him to his contract, there was no dividends actually paid on that. You can think about what the Cowboys gave up and tried to get Joey Galloway. They give up two number ones, and Joey Galloway messes up his knee in training camp and never does anything. They gave up a first and a, another pick for Roy Williams from the Lions, <clears throat> and that didn't work out. <clears throat> they traded <clears throat> for Amari Cooper, number one pick, 
paid him a $21 million a year contract and ended up getting rid of him. And so you start to think in the same way that the Cowboys don't go into free agency because they feel like they're snake bitten between Brandon Carr and Greg Hardy, where they spent a good bit of money on what was taught to be top tier free agents, although Greg Hardy had a lot of issues that they don't do that anymore. It's like, no, we're not going to take that chance because we might, you know, make a mistake. And in life, you have to understand that life, you make mistakes. It's learning from those mistakes and, you know, moving on. Their thing is we're not going to learn from the mistakes. We're just not going to take a chance and possibly make those again. Instead of looking at um, Brandon Carr, who was a really good cornerback, the expectations were that he was going to be Daryl Revis, and he was never Daryl Revis before that. Greg Hardy, you looked at and said, you're trying to get a discount because this guy has got legal problems and mental problems and stuff, and that's the kind of guy we can get for cheaper. And sometimes cheaper isn't always the route to go because there's a reason why it's cheaper. And so now get us back to CeeDee Lamb, who, if he's not here today, it's $1.5 million that he's lost. Now we're talking about some real money. We're talking about going into next week. You know, we're talking about another game check because that's where we are when you miss games. So, you know, that may be chump change to, you know, if he gets a new contract, that's, you know, $35 million a year. But if the Cowboys end up playing hardball and saying, we're not going to do another contract, which is a possibility. You have to think that the Cowboys are thinking, what are we going to get if we're going to pay that wide receiver? Because their mentality is as well. You know, instead of spending that $35 million a year, you know, average salary, you know, maybe we get three other guys out there and stuff. And the other part of this is, is looking at practice and getting high on your own supply. I think the Cowboys are really looking forward to the practice today to see how Dak is working with the receivers. Jalen Tolbert, you know, Dak has gone out there and said on another team he could be a number one. The Cowboys may believe, hey, you know, Jalen Brooks is out there is playing pretty good. Clapper's playing pretty good. You know, we got a veteran and um, – uh, God, I'm having a brain fart. Um, and Brandon Cooks, that maybe, maybe we can do more with less. That's the philosophy. We're all in with these players that are here on the field. We're going all in with those guys. We're not all in with anybody else, just these guys. And would it surprise you if the Cowboys did something like that? I mean, they did trade Amari Cooper for a fifth-round pick. Now, let's be clear here. CD can't go anywhere. CD can't go anywhere. He is under contract with that fifth year option at $17.9 million. And for the Cowboys, you know, they can look at this and say, yeah, we can get that contract done now, but, you know, and, and save $10 million, but we're not going to spend that money. We still have about $10 million in cap space now. So there's no reason to be to have urgency there at this moment for the Cowboys. It's not that they have a player in mind that we want to sign and we need some money now. And they could easily go ahead and say, you're going to play on that $17 million contract and then franchise tag him. And there's absolutely positively nothing that they can do about it. Nothing. And the longer he sits out, if he sits out all preseason, we're talking about $4 million of his 17.9. And that's when it starts to really start saying, okay, I'm going to get here. Now, the problem you may have is maybe this becomes a situation like Dwayne Thomas. Where Dwayne Thomas, he showed up, he played, but he wasn't playing by your rules. He didn't speak. Rest his soul. So... Yeah, the Cowboys are definitely playing hardball right now, and it doesn't seem to be any sense of urgency on their part, and so on. At least, at least it hasn't escalated to the Brandon Ayuk situation where you got to trade him. And you never know. It could get to that point. And if the Cowboys wide receivers continue to look really good in training camp, 
and they believe that they can do more with less, it wouldn't be a surprise at all to me. So as we go through here, here's the next thing that seems to be kind of funny to me. Um, I got the ire of a lot of people, um, I want to say 2018 or 2019, when I had brought up that I was told that the Cowboys were interested in Earl Thomas. And I went out there and I was talking about it and things that they were trying to make a trade for him. And Mike Fisher was asked by several fans out there, is there anything to this? And Mike Fisher threw me under the bus and said, basically, you know, that's bullshit. You know, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And I ended up getting a lot of people that said, you're a clickbaiter. But the funny thing was, is it kind of came out about two weeks later that the Cowboys were trying to make a move for Earl Thomas. In fact, they tried even at the draft to trade for him that Seattle just wanted too much. Then there was Jamal Adams, you know, that they were trying to make a move for. The Cowboys, we didn't have any good safeties. You know, we had Xavier Lays the Wood as uh I used to like to call him or wanted to think that he was going to be, but he just didn't end up working out. He got worse as time went on. And we did not have safeties. And then lo and behold, we started collecting safeties. You know? You know, J. Ron Curse and Malik Hooker. Malik Hooker, for those out there that say the Cowboys don't do anything free agency, um, Malik Hooker was a free agent, y'all. And the Cowboys got him dirt cheap and he has been here playing at an elite level for next to nothing so don't completely say they don't do anything they just don't do the big name signings but we got the safety room taken care of and we got better at drafting them okay we were literally a safety desert and then it seemed like for a while we kind of overcompensated we overcompensated so well that we were taking safeties and we were literally playing them at linebacker and then, of course, last year, we basically didn't have any linebackers. And now it seems like when we have nothing, the cupboard is bared, we go over and above that position. And so yesterday, the Cowboys signed linebacker Nick Virgil. I'm sorry, the day before yesterday, Nick Virgil, veteran, veteran linebacker. Um, you know, again, this is, you know, Bargain basement shopping, you know, sometimes bargain basement shopping ends up being a Malik Hooker that ends up being a great player for you for three years. And sometimes it ends up being Don Terry Poe, a guy who's, you know, overweight and can't do jack anymore on his way out of the NFL. Um, But now the Cowboys have taken a spot where we literally had nobody and losing Van Der Esch finally retiring. Um, in a shortened career to a point where linebacking core is actually a position of strength. I wish the Cowboys would look at that defensive line. Now, we did sign another defensive lineman, of course, yesterday, and Albert uh, Higgins, um, another guy who's uh, he's, he's been on some NFL teams. He's been on some rosters and can be a guy that we can play in the role. So we'll see how those guys work out. They're definitely here during camp. And we have a couple of weeks before the big cutdowns happen, in which case you're going to probably be seeing the Cowboys continue to bring in you know, more and more players to um, work out on the team to try and fill in some of these holes. My big hope, and one of the things I can't wait to see today is, is to see how Mozzie Smith practices with the Rams, okay? I, I, I know y'all are probably sick and tired of Mozzie Smith, okay? But Mozzie has been much maligned. I'm on Dan Salio's show, and I'm trying to talk about the things that I'm seeing from the guy, that I'm seeing that he is, you know, out there early, working hard, that he has changed his body. And all they do is laugh. All they do is laugh. And they, that's fine. That's fine. Because I see a guy who is trying to elevate himself and to become the player that he should be. And I'm going to see how this evolution goes. And see, that's that's my guy. I'm going to get, you know, screw y'all. I'm going to get a Mozzie Smith jersey, and that is going to be my pet project right there because the big guys get no love. And so as we get ready to get out of here for this and I start getting my stuff packed together, 
uh, to go over a couple of hours before practice. I'll probably do a live stream uh, from the parking lot before uh, practice and things, and um, you know, get you guys a feel of before practice. Um, this is an interesting one because, you know, there seems to be some to me, to me as from the outside looking in, that there's a few dynamics that don't seem to be good with the Eagles right now. You know, there's still the whole question of Nick Sirianni's role and the trust and everything else. That there was the whole Jalen Hurts uh, and him. And, you know, what's kind of crazy is is typically the way things work out is the coach is the guy that, you know, kind of brings the player back down when they're doing something wrong. But you remember when Nick Sirianni literally gave the finger to somebody, and here is the, the quarterback is like, he's the adult in the room, and he's like, coach, don't do that. Come on, man. That there's some problems that are there. You know, we, we're getting the good old – uh, that, that Jalen Hurts is about to break a record of not throwing interceptions at practice and stuff. And I think the record that he's about to break is the one he had from last year before he threw 15 interceptions. Um, I think C.J. Uh, Gardner-Johnson, I think, may be having surgery. N'Kobe Dean, you know, I remember how happy Philly 500 was when they're like, we got N'Kobe Dean, we got N'Kobe Dean. It's still not working out coming off a defense that was 31st against the pass. So there's some problems there. So this I find interesting, listening to Rich Eisen and this prediction of how the Eagles season is going to go. And uh, TJ basically saying who his most hated team is. Let's listen up here. Man, that's going to be exciting every week to see. Okay. For sure. I'm with you. And uh, I want to play the win-loss game for the birds. All right. Win-loss game for the birds. All right. Eagles Boy, you got right in there. I mean, oh, it, it, it's it's the home of NFL films practically. Exactly. I mean, this is where right John Facenda, this is where John Facenda did the news. Could you imagine you turn on the TV? <laughs> it's a little it's different and than now, here is Harry Callas with the sports. Good. All right, here we go. Live, local, late breaking. <laughs> The Philadelphia Eagles win loss game. This is only the third I've got of these. By the way, one month wow. from 30 That's days from today. One month from 30 days from, 30 days from today. About the bird. All right. It's, it's unbelievable. Uh, Packers in Brazil, what do you got? That's going to be a tough one. Viva Birds, that's a win. Home for the Falcons on a Monday night. I think we take that one, too. You're in New Orleans week three. That's a win. 3-0 and at the Bucks. <laughs> I think we start hard and we keep going. That's Never a playoff last loss. Year, that's a that's a playoff loss avenged. Coming off the bye week, 4-0 home for Cleveland. I think that's a win also, Rich. Oh, man. I guess, what would Quinion Mitchell be on Brandon Ayuk? Is that what will happen? Mm. Uh, at the Giants, yeah. Saquon's back in MetLife. That's the way. You know, I'm thinking of taking the train into MetLife, the caucus, to see that game. 300 yards from Saquon, that's a win. 6 <laughs> and zero oh at the Bengals. Is this really 500? That, I think, is going to be our first flip-up. I think Burrow gets us. Home for the Jaguars, 6-1. and one. That's a win as well. 7-1 and one at the football. Cowboys. Ah. I don't think they're all in. I think the Eagles are all in, so that's a win. 8-1, and one, home for the Commanders on a Thursday night. That's a win, too. 9-1 and one out here in Los Angeles at the Rams on a Sunday night. I think that's a loss. I think we flip up. I think Cup and Puka give us the work. Nine and two at the Ravens. I think we're going to lose that one too. Nine and three home for the Panthers. That's a win. Ten and three home for the Steelers. That's a win as well. I don't care if it's Russ or Justin. So is that uh, Joey Porter Jr. covers Ayuk in that one? No, no, wait a minute. That, that's not who that uh, – I'm, I'm mixing up my team. Quinion on, on Ayuk there. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and three at the Commanders. I think that's a win as well. We're going to finish the year strong. Ooh. Twelve and three home for the Cowboys. I think we sweep the Cowboys easily this year. Wow. Easily. Thirteen and three home for the G-Men. 
And depending on whether we need that last week or not, I'm still going to give a win, but we might be sitting. 14 and 3, Jordan in Bucks County, PA. I don't think they're being talked about enough. They were just in the Super Bowl two years ago. We had a slip up. Let's go, Berg. Thanks very much. They were certainly talked quite a bit a lot on uh, ESPN.com today. 14 and 3. Yes, Deep dive that oh, Sirianni and Hertz had a f- quote unquote fractured relationship. Yeah, I like that. This is some story. <laughs> Everybody seek that out. I have not uh, really read very much. I can't wait to deep dive as soon as we're done. I'll talk more about it tomorrow. Look forward to that. That's a shame. (laughs) 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 That didn't sound like Seinfeld. Uh, That's a shame. Too bad. I I hate to hear of... Teams in my division getting into training camp fights and 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 you know shattered relationships between the head coach and the quarterback while we stay all in. <laughs> I, hate to, I hate to see these things. That's a shame. Start, start bench cut the other NFC East teams. That I okay, easy. I of all the teams I dislike, oh. I like the Giants the most. Wow. Okay. So I'll start them. Uh, and then I'll. This is in terms of who you like, or what? What's the? Is that what's what you the, mean? What's the I, like yeah, I just meant start by kind of like who you who you hate the least, I yeah. guess, because you I, said you hate all of them. Yeah, I hate all of them, but I hate the Giants the le- of all the teams I hate. Oh, hate the I least. like the Giants the most. Mm. Well, that's that because of what sense. you've had two miracles in the Meadowlands against oh. them. Is that what it is? <laughs> now you know what. Look, I was kept, I always it was funny. Liked, Mer- Meryl I always Reese when Meryl Reese, the voice of the longtime voice of the Eagles, got the Roselle Award at the Jacket Dinner this year. Oh, nice. And and he called both miracles in the Meadowlands. Yeah, I mean the. The Pasarchik handoff the Jackson and the Deshaun, Deshaun Jackson, Jackson punt return. Oh, that was the yeah, Deshaun exactly. Jackson. So that. I'm like, all right. So Giants start, and then um, I know it. Brent's, Brent's the Washington football Brent's team. Fuck the, yeah, yeah, exactly. the dirty birds. Yeah, just yeah. Pluck, pluck he calls the them the Washington well. football team. Mm-hmm. That's what, the same the way that team in Michigan fans refer to the Buckeyes as Ohio. All right. mm-hmm. Team up north. Dig them a little bit. Yeah. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the. All right. F them birds. All right, good people. We're going to roll on out of here, get ready for practice today. And I hope you guys follow along. We'll probably be doing a live stream before practice there. And um, we'll see you there. Peace. Disrespected yet? Does this defense have any heart? No. They suck. I've been telling you all season, Philly. They shit on you. They have shit on you. Don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, <laughs> Jalen Carter, Slight? They shit on you. They've shit on you. <laughs> they have shit on you. Don't.